It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therat is here. He's about to leave for Barcelona, so you'll forgive him if he's a little distracted. Mary Jo Foley, too. They'll talk about the latest on Windows on ARM or WOA. More news about Windows 8, including maybe a logo change. And Paul's reaction to uh, Apple's OS X Mountain Lion. Hoax or not? It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 248, recorded February 16th, 2012. We just don't know. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Go to My PC. Take care of last minute requests from anywhere, right from your phone, with the Go to My PC app for iPhone. Visit go to mypc.com for your free 30 day trial. Use the offer code Windows. And by Hover.com. Hover is domain name registration and management that's simple. Upgrade to a premium domain and trade in your old clunkers at windows.hover.com. It's time for Windows Weekly. <laughs> I thought maybe Paul and Mary Joe we could add some goofy sound effects to the show. Woo! And uh, <laughs> turn it into a morning show. What do you think? Some ch- some Jerry Lewis. Windows science. in the morning. Ah! Yeah. Glee. <laughs> Hello, Paul Thorat. He's the editor in chief of the Super Site for Windows Win Super Site.com. That's what he is when he's at home. Mary Joe Foley, when she's at home, she's a beer maker. And. The creator of AllAboutMicrosoft.com, ZDNet blog. Hello, boy and girl. Welcome. Hello. Paul is about to leave. In fact, at some point during this show, Paul is actually going to get up and I will, walk I will just out get the up door. and leave. <laughs> that will be... I I just don't, want, don't take it wrong, folks. It's not you. It's him. Uh, you're going to Barcelona just at the exact wrong time, as it turns out. Oh, in so many ways, Leo. In so many ways. <laughs> Not only are the pilots on strike. The by the way, the transit organization, the guys who do the metro, whatever yeah. that's called in Barcelona, yeah. also might strike. All right. And then of course Mobile World Congress is the week after I leave. The week after you leave. So you're not gonna be there for the WOA announcement. It's a um, yeah. It's oh. a, all kinds of good timing. <laughs> but you know but what I, you know Barcelona in the spring, there's nothing wrong with that, my friend. I'll let you know if I ever make it. I'm, <laughs> He's gonna I'm at the point now where I just don't care. I think if I went to the if I went to the airport and they said, you know what, we can't get you there. I'd say, you know what, I don't care. Good. Thank Apparently, you. Paul is flying to Madrid, which is you know not so far from Barcelona. Then London, Very close. then London, then right. Barcelona. This is this this is like flying to San Francisco and then Omaha. <laughs> and then Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't really. It doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> So they're only striking within the nation. Right. Got it. <laughs> so I'll either that or I guess maybe, maybe Iberia's pilots, or they have pilots that aren't employees that fly outside of the country. Or I think really I, it's I safe to say this is targeted at you, Paul. That's what I am. Yeah, it really much. feels pretty much like this is a here, you know, here's why this is beautiful, Leo. Attack. This is Leo, uh, Leo. I'm sorry. This is Europe in a nutshell. Uh, not only are they on strike, but they have a very specific schedule for the strike. So I don't have it in front of me, but it's something like, we're not going to fly on the 14th, the 16th, the 17th, <laughs> and the 19th. Like, they, they literally have a, like a That's kind of an funny. organized thing going on. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's so uh, it's not on your uh, rundown of things you want to talk about today, but I think uh, we have to talk about it because it happened this morning, and that's probably why it's not in your rundown. Uh, Apple... Uh, I th- well, actually, it's 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 not in our rundown because it's you know it's not it's not I understand it's not Microsoft <laughs> but 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 I do think it's interesting that Apple has just suddenly released a preview a developer preview Leo, Leo. way to say it is I think it's interesting interesting <laughs> interesting Smithers of this uh, OS 10 Mountain Lion which they say will be out in the summer yeah right before Windows 8. And I'm not a calendar expert, but I think that's before Windows 8. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I think that was the point. <laughs> while I haven't yet had a chance to digest all the material Apple has released, it does sound as if it's uh, it's kind of 
Apple's version of Windows 8. In other words, a hybrid operating tablet operating system. I, I don't I don't see it quite that way. I, I, I have a couple of thoughts around it. I, I think that the first thing I would say is in, in Mac OS X Lion, they added a number of iOS user experiences to that release, you know, for better or worse. I mean, some of them were good. Some of them were not Full so good. Full screen, swiping. Yeah. There was a lot of things that felt really very much like yeah, the iPad. I, I look at this as being more of that, right? There, there's They're adding uh, the iMessages application right. and so forth. So there's stuff like that. But, you know, it's it's not the same integrated strategy that Microsoft's taking. They're still retaining these two different OSs, uh, Apple is. And I think that they're doing it uh, for expediency's sake. You know, and I think they looked at this and said, Windows 8 looks like it's got a little momentum. Let's let's push up what we can push up before that happens. And I think that's smart for them and, and kudos for them. But the, I was talking to Mary Jo about this earlier today. And I have to say, from, from a Microsoft perspective, if you had to pick the one thing that was the most interesting about this was is nothing about this leaked. Nothing. This was a surprise to virtually everybody. Everybody. Right? everybody. Um, and to the point where I think most people who woke up this morning and saw that headline said, it's an April Fool's joke. I thought it was a joke. It's right, because it sounds <laughs> ludicrous. Mountain lion, seriously. Mountain lion. Like, it, it just, it sounds dumb. And so I, I think over in Redmond, the way they're looking at this is, wow, how did they do that? <laughs> you know, because Microsoft can't do anything without it leaking. Uh, but you know, I, well, you know no, it I mean, was crazy. I was telling Paul this this morning, too. So yesterday, I heard from two of my sources that Apple was going to announce Mountain Lion today. And so I sent a note to my editors and I said, I think Apple's going to announce a new release of Mac OS today. And my, my editor's like, aren't you the Microsoft reporter? Are you sure? This seems kind of random, you know? How would you so know? I said, yeah. How right, would exactly. You know, How would you Mary know? Jo? Stay inside your own so, wheelhouse, yeah. Mary Jo. You're right. just a Windows reporter. You could possibly know that. You're so cute. Go back over to Windows, man. <laughs> so then, then he said to me, why don't you write it if you've got it? And I'm like, I, I don't think I have anything except the code name and the date. And I said, well, if that was Windows, it would be enough to write. But I'm kind of scared to write it about Apple because, you know, I don't really know Apple like I know Microsoft. And you didn't want to so look we foolish. Hot. We didn't want to look foolish and we didn't write it. And then boom, this morning, here it is. You had a scoop. In your hot little, well, you know, I'm trying to imagine how many bloggers would have done that. I, well, I just was going to say <laughs> <You know? laughs> this. I was just going to say this. This is where this is the difference between an actual journalist yeah. <laughs> and uh, and that uh, that mob we call. And I and I look, I love bloggers, I'm, uh, but uh, but there is a there is kind of a traditional I love journalist. Them like I love cute little children. I want to tweak <laughs> like them Chihuahua. on the cheek and give them a lollipop. Um, but a blogger wouldn't hesitate because getting it wrong just has no penalty. In that mm -hmm. world, but as if you know, on ZDNet, uh, there, I guess I can understand why you'd be a little nervous, yeah, to yeah. to make such a to, to be a bit the laugh because we would be the laughing stock if it had been false and you said yeah, and you had asked, way, I mean, oh, they're going to do Mountain Lion. It didn't even sound <laughs> real. Uh, it didn't uh, sound I, real. I, I know. was the first person to write that Apple was going to switch to Intel. I wrote it as a rumor uh, because <laughs> for the same reason that Mary Jo was uh, decided not to write about this topic because it sounds dumb coming from me. Um, and then, you know, within a few weeks or a month or whatever, the Wall Street Journal, somebody, you know, wrote a story about it. And I said, yeah, but I, 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 I had this over here. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I wrote that. Uh, so, but the yeah. thing, and the only reason I bring it up is uh, it does seem in, you know, in conjunction with what Microsoft's doing with Windows 8, it does seem, uh, you know, related. And I think it's, your 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 I would position is kind of interesting that it's that it's a, that it's in fact a preemptive strike against Microsoft. Yeah, I mean yeah, Apple yeah, hasn't yeah. really cared what Microsoft did for a long well, time. You know what? They, that's the public stance. I mean, you got to remember yeah. uh, on the flip side, Microsoft's public stance about Apple for many many years was to never say the word Apple. They right. didn't exist. Nice little and, company. Yeah. So when yeah. when the well, except within the context of oh, aren't they cute? We make a version of the Mac right. for those guys too. Don't worry about it. We're not antitrust bullies, you know, but, you know, the iPod came out, iTunes, um, you know, as these things oh, started yeah. to happen in Snowball and Microsoft, of course, had its own initiatives that went nowhere in those areas. Um, yeah. Eventually, they got out of that and they started, you know, now today, I think they go after Apple pretty explicitly. But, you know, there was a several year period there where you couldn't get Microsoft to say the word Apple. You couldn't do it. Right. And they were obviously dancing around it the whole time, you know. Um, so I think, Apple, you know, you know I could be accused of the same thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and yeah, and this was really, I thought this was interesting timing too. Yesterday, Microsoft, um, the CFO of Microsoft, Peter Klein, he was at the Goldman Sachs conference and he spent a lot of time talking about how um, a big advantage he thinks that Windows 8 is going to have is how they're going to leverage the cloud services across 
different form factors. So, you know, the same cloud services on Windows Phone, on Windows on your desktop, on Windows on tablets. And then when you see how Apple is positioning Mountain Lion, it's almost the exact exact same positioning. Tim I Cook mean, it's like been rubbing his hands together like a bond. I know. <laughs> you know. It was so crazy. <laughs> when that Microsoft yeah. guy was saying. But it's but there's so they've said very much that iCloud will be fully integrated into the uh, OS and all of that. That's the well, like like it is in iOS, right? right. I mean, I, I would imagine it's going to be very similar. You'll have some kind of a uh, whatever the OS 10 control panel is called, and there'll be little switches where you turn the little features on and off and so forth, and those things automatically pour data into the applicable applications. I mean, it's very um, smart. You know, Do you think it's, it's and, Windows on ARM that particularly scares Apple? Well, I, there are two sides to it, right? So. Uh, obviously, Windows and ARM is the thing that's going to compete with the iPad. That's a big deal for Apple. And Windows in general is the thing that competes with Mac OS X. Mac, you know, one of the things, Apple makes a very uh, explicit stance around how, how many quarters in a row that Mac OS X, or Mac growth rather, has outpaced the industry. It's, it's something like 1,373 months in a row, whatever it is. Um, they always make this big point of saying something like that. Um, they want that to continue. You know, Windows 8 is a big enough bump i think because it's such a huge release and a big consumer release that you know maybe they'll, their little record will be broken for one quarter or something and they can't have that so I, I i give apple all the credit in the world for being this aggressive and coming out and doing this i think people want to see iterative updates to things and i think they want to see pcs be more like mobile devices and be upgraded not in huge monolithic updates every three years but in regular updates right. and just get you know features added to the system i think this is a really smart way to do it all right but yet we're not seeing this in windows happen at all right or and no signs uh, well of this happening. <laughs> so uh <laughs> let's put it this way um Getting Microsoft to talk on the record about anything related to Windows 8 right now is next to impossible. If you think they're going to talk about, you know, maybe their plans for post-Windows 8, and maybe that that is the plan, yeah. there's, there's no way. There's no way. Yeah. No. So despite... I'm, I, I don't think they're going to do it, though. I, I just, I mean, remember when Microsoft split yeah. off a lot of things into Windows Live, everybody was saying, oh, good, well, now they can at least rev those Windows Live services constantly and have, have this be more up-to-date, more incremental, and that never happened, right? So, well, you were, we'll see. I, you, we talk about this, I think. You were in the room with me when I made that stink bomb in front of the guy from Microsoft who said, oh, yeah, you know, Windows Live Essentials is great because it lets us update the uh, the applications more frequently. And I said, yeah, that's a nice theory, but you've never actually done it. Actually and then the room just went like, <laughs> quiet. Said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, here's what I mean. The last one was released on this date, and that's when the last version of Windows came out. You have never updated these things in between. What What are you crowing about? There's nothing. <laughs> Not we could. This is a good thing. It's a good theory, we but could nothing if has we really wanted to, and that's the point. <laughs> well, I'm always uh, like the I'm like the little the, the tack yeah. you sit on in a, in yeah. a classroom, yeah. you know. You you are the attack <laughs> chihuahua. Yeah. Um, so um, in light, you know, a week later, now you guys didn't hardly had hardly any time to analyze this Sanofsky uh, eight thousand mm -hmm. word uh, piece uh, last <laughs> yeah. week. Um, yeah. Now, in light of what he said, uh, do we know what we know? Do we know what we don't know? Uh, do we not know what we don't know? There are what no don't knowns, we? Uh, uh, there are no unknowns. And <laughs> known unknowns. <laughs> what are the known knowns and the unknown knowns and the known knowns? Well, uh, yeah, it's a big talk. It is. But we we wanted to talk. We were going back and forth. What what didn't we say last week that we still should yeah, talk about? And out? yeah, one thing we were talking about, and we actually both heard from uh, one of our listeners, is you know the whole debate is. Is Windows on ARM going to be a consumer play for Microsoft or an enterprise play? Or maybe both, you know. And, um, you know, because everybody's been assuming up to this point, you know, Windows on ARM, like you said, Leo, is going to be their iPad competitor, right? right like that's right. the thing they're going to position most head to head. But, you know, if you think about iPads, they're making more and more inroads into enterprises. So is Microsoft going to, you know, make sure that Windows on ARM is also going to be a good play for the enterprise or not? And in the not category, we found out last week, no plugins allowed, right. um, Microsoft apps only in the desktop right. on Windows on ARM. So, you know, some enterprise developers are saying like, wow, this is going to shut me out. I, I don't know. Well, I, you know, <laughs> we talked about this on Mac Break Weekly this week. Salesforce is an example, which is big, the big CRM company is doing a ton of iPad apps. Uh, right. I am sure they would like to do WOA apps. Um, and, uh, I, and I'm sure they will. I, I think the, the important thing to remember, though, is this. If, if you 
are a Windows developer and you have some code base, whatever it is, Win32 code that's written in straight C, um, you know, C-sharp code for .NET, Silverlight, WPF, whatever it is. Um, obviously, the front-end stuff is not going to be applicable to Metro, but any of the back-end code that you have uh, can come forward and can be part of a Metro-style app that is sold through the store or given away through the store. That stuff is fine. I mean, uh, Microsoft knows that the first version of, of WinRT, which is that, uh, you know, the runtime and also the, uh, the set of APIs, uh, the SDK, whatever that, you know, underlies it for developers, is not going to be as full featured in the beginning as it will be later down the road. I mean, it's just the nature of it. Just like when I, I, I use the example of .NET, I believe that .NET 1.0, when, when that ship didn't even have sound APIs so that developers would have to call back into Win32 to access uh, the PC speaker or whatever. Um, so WinRT is going to be a little bit like that. How could it not be? I mean, they, they've only been working on it for a short period of time. I mean, as good as it may be, a, as much as it may be based on existing frameworks and libraries and so on, I mean, it's still a kind of a 1.0 product, and it's going to have some holes. So, And, and more important, I think, and maybe more uh, to the point of the conversation, is that there's an existing code base, and developers are going to want to bring that stuff forward. So um, when you write an application for the iPad, uh, as Salesforce or whatever, you know, you're basing that on code you have somewhere else, but you have to port it over. There's no one, no one right. is writing Objective C code before. It's a new right. thing. It's brand new. Yeah, yeah. So I think one of the nice things here is that if you were uh, developing in one of these high level languages on, a lot on easier. Windows, a lot easier. I, yeah, so theoretically, it should be yeah. a lot easier. Uh, you know, Scoble was on Twit on uh, Sunday. He had he told a story about having a, a flying uh, next, sitting next to a, an executive with General Electric who said that they are switching to iPad in almost every respect. And so I can, I can imagine that just as you could say that Mountain Lion is an attempt to, uh, you know, counter Microsoft, that, that certainly Windows on ARM um, is, is, is to, you got to build a beachhead in the enterprise. If, if, if you see companies yeah. like GE yep. saying, hey, we're going to go iPad, you've got to do something. Yeah. Yeah, Mary, uh, I mean Mary Jo and I, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, like I um, found this guy, he's a... Uh, He's basically an evangelist for Dynamics AX, which is one of Microsoft's ERP products. And he was kind of digging around in the docs, and he found a reference in one of the Microsoft docs to how they're going to bring their own enterprise apps to um, Windows on ARM and to Windows on x86. And here's, here's what they're going to do, which is kind of interesting. So, you know, there's an app that's huge, like Microsoft Dynamics AX. It's, a, you know, many probably millions of lines of code even. And um, what they're going to do is develop a little uh, kind of HTML5 type client that's going to run on Windows on ARM. And they're not going to even try to port the app itself. It's going to be like there's this Windows, uh, this Windows 8 mini app, which will be an HTML5 client connecting through a web service back to the rest of the app. So I think, you know, the fact Microsoft's going this route with their own uh, enterprise apps may kind of give us a clue that they're telling other companies, hey, you should do this too. You don't have to totally redo your app as a complete do-over Metro style app. You could potentially kind of break it in half, do the front end client with HTML5, and then leave your back end on a server somewhere and connect through a web service. So that's one way to kind of get around that, um, you know, oh, I, I don't want to redo an app that's thousands or millions of lines of code, right? Oh, uh, you mean on a tablet? Right. Yeah. Right. I think Microsoft so, actually is in the best position for an enterprise if they, if you know, first of all, they're already there, but if they uh, can <laughs> offer a, com a compelling uh, desktop and tablet uh, uh, solution, the enterprise right. is going to be right. happier than just an iPad solution. I, I think, the, uh, you know, I... I tried to boil this down in an article yesterday, but I, I think, you know, it's easy to sort of create labels for people. You know, here's here's a consumer thing. Here's a business thing. You know, that's a very simple statement. The truth is that most people are both consumers and business people if they're, you know, knowledge workers or whatever. And and even within those groups of people that may do different types of tasks, you know, they have different needs from technology and so forth. Some people could use an iPad in a work situation and get what for them is work done. But for most people who are uh, sort of content creators... That may not be an acceptable tool, at least not right now. Um, there's no reason you can't have kind of a mix of things, you know. And I think one of the, the nice advantages that Microsoft may have with Windows 8 is this notion of hybrid environments where, you know, you hop on a plane and you've got this tablet and you're touching it and you're playing cute little games and you're checking your email or whatever. But maybe you get home or work and you dock the thing and now you're using a full keyboard and a mouse, you get the big screen. 
and maybe you're using big desktop applications like Word and Excel to get work done or whatever. And it has that kind of interesting opportunity to offer people uh, both, you know, through a single system. It's a big bet. I mean, it's not it's not a guarantee that this is the right approach at all. Right. But I mean, it's right. it's very interesting and possibly uh, a huge advantage. I mean, I think I think we're going to see. That's, but I, I that's think these, my point. Yeah, I think it's a big advantage. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yeah, and I think those Wawa tablets are uh, by and large going to be consumer devices. I think they're going to be iPads, but for Windows. You know, I think that's the way to look at them. So you don't think, think despite the pressure, the inevitable pressure to put uh, to allow desktop apps on uh, on ARM devices, that they're going to give in on that. That they're they're not. They're going to say they, they, it has they to be metro. said they're not. They said yeah. it has to be metro. Well, metro and that small uh, subset of you know our apps. That we're giving. But you know what? I'm not convinced they may, they, they aren't going to There's got to be pressure you know, to do that. Uh, no, the, and the reason I'm thinking about this is because on look what happened on Windows Phone. Like, remember, it was going to be no native apps, right. right? Exactly. And now things have crept in and crept in. We talked about this last time. I think Raphael counted how many native apps there are now for Windows Phone. It's like 50 some, some odd, you know. So if, yeah. if, say, Adobe comes to Microsoft and says, look, we're not doing, we're not doing Photoshop well, actually, as a Metro app. <laughs> they're adding they're adding native coding capabilities to Windows Phone 8. So that's already that yeah. is officially changing. Yep. So I mean that's that's like a, an indication well, to me like there might be exceptions, right? It's maturation. I mean I, I yeah, yeah, okay. I, I I yeah, sure. I mean what what's to say that um something like Office fifteen, right? They've they've said we're gonna have these four office apps. What if those office apps, even though they're desktop apps, I mean, what if they offered some kind of a a hybrid functionality where if you launched it from Metro, you know, from the start screen, you got a full screen experience that didn't have the the taskbar. You know, what if you could do something like that? Uh, to the user, it wouldn't matter what this thing was as long as it worked consistently, right, with the other things that were on their computer. I mean, that might be a very interesting um, user experience and also something that other developers could emulate, you know. Uh, potentially, I mean, in Adobe, uh, like a tier one developer, um, if Microsoft allowed them to do that, you know, I guess, we'll, we'll find out. I mean, we, you know, uh, I threw the, that note at the beginning where we, you know, we often say we just don't know. I mean, somebody asked me about this on email. He says, I feel like I listen to your podcast and you guys say we don't know, you know, 200 times a show. <laughs> um, I, this is one of the harsh realities of dealing with Microsoft today or with at least with the Windows folks in particular, because, you know, they're so secretive about everything. We We have to go on. What we have, I mean, you'll you'll when we talk about um, uh, leaked information, depending on the source, we can be a little more uh, positive about it or not. But I mean, unfortunately, uh, even with all, with that lengthy post that Leo was referencing, you kind of go through it and you pull out all the bits and you combine them, and you look at them, and you try, you think you've got the full picture. And now there are ten more questions. You know, there's always mm -hmm. questions. There's so there's so much we just don't know. Well, there's it, a it lot to know. I mean, there's a lot to know. There is. It's it's you know. Yeah, but just I mean two. Just two examples of things we don't know that it's kind of like we don't we actually don't know this. We don't know right now. Are the bits going to be available on February 29th? If you look back <laughs> in the post, it right. never yeah. says that. It's, it's and so I went back. Right. I went back and said to Microsoft, so are the people going to get the bits that day? And they said, we're not saying. We don't know. Interesting. Yeah, we don't know. They don't say that. But um, <laughs> I bet I they don't some, know. One of their <laughs> bloggers had a post where it said it's coming on February 29th. But that post was very clearly just based on what Microsoft had announced. So, like everyone else, he looked at that and said, "Oh, it's coming February 29th." You know, will it come February 27th? Will it come, you know, the 29th? Will it come March 16th? Guess what the answer is, Leo? We don't what? know. We don't know. <laughs> and guess guess what else we don't know? Is Windows Server 8 also going to be updated simultaneously with this? Guess Probably what? The no comment. It's going to be updated uh, simultaneously <laughs> with it, right? Mm, yeah, um, I think developer I tools. They have to do that part. They, Windows I, I, Server 8, I, I mean, yeah, yeah Windows what, Server what 8, though, time, they could make it a couple of How often later. does the logical answer actually equate to the truth, right? <laughs> I mean, you, you just uh, said, yeah. like, they, they, they have to update the development. <laughs> I mean, I, I agree with you that they should and almost yeah. certainly will. You know, you never, you never know with these guys. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. I hope they do. Sigh. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a sigh sound effect. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sad trombone or no? That, what is that? What's that one called? That's the one from uh, the Price That's is the Right. Sound I make naturally all the time. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Isn't there? There's something. 
Well, anyway. That's like when the coyote puts up his little umbrella and then the boulder falls on him. It's the, that <laughs> moment, right? <laughs> It's like the moment. That moment? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <Here's the joke>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Uh, let, actually, let's take a break. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then more news of Windows 8, but not specifically WOA. MOA, WOA. Uh, also, Tango. We shall Tango. And uh, and a lot more. Paul Thorat, Mary Joe Foley. Paul, ha- Paul has half an hour before his flight for Barcelona leaves. So I'm going to lisp the rest of this ad to get you in the mood. How about that? Fantastic. Fantastic. Yes, he says. Please. I want to talk a little bit about go to my PC, uh, which is the great remote access uh, software uh, that lets you access your Windows or Mac from anywhere, including... Right from your phone now with the Go to My PC app for the iPhone. Now that's pretty slick. I'll give you a, a a case study. This happens to me every single time. I'm on the way to the airport, and uh, usually uh, when I'm on my way to the because I like to cut things close. I don't like to waste my time. I'm like, in fact, Bill Gates was famous for this. He he, had, he almost said it was a game with him to see how fast he could get to the airport, and how how close he could cut it to the door closing on the plane. I don't play a game. I just do it. Because that's just the way I am. I'm late for everything, as you all know. So I'm halfway there, and then I go, oh, I forgot, you know, the PowerPoint or whatever. Uh, I could turn back. I could miss a flight. I just go on. Now, with Go to My PC, I can. I get to the airport. I whip out my iPhone, and I can log into my office computer, get whatever I need, respond to an email, run any program, access any network resource. My friends, it is precisely like having your work computer in the pocket Without the unsightly bulge. <laughs> is that a keyboard you have in your pocket there? No. <laughs> uh, it is go to my PC, Mac or PC. Here's how it, you do it. First, got to install it on the desktop by going to the website, go to mypc.com. In fact, it, right now, if you go there right now and use the offer code Windows, you have it free for 30 days of unlimited use. And then download uh, the appropriate mobile app. They're all free. iPhone, iPad. Android, Geo. T- no, I'm sorry, no Windows Mobile yet. Windows Phone Seven yet. G o t o m y p c dot com. Try it free, uh, and uh, you will love this for 30 days. Make sure you use the offer code Windows to get the free version. Now, completely mobile, so you're carrying a PC in your pocket. Go to MyPC.com. We thank them for their support of Windows Weekly. Moving along. Um, so this is stuff that we know about Windows 8, not Windows on ARM, or is it both? For instance, they're going to change the logo? What? Are they, though? Are they? What? Yeah, maybe. They're sc- maybe, scaring maybe me. <laughs> is, is this another one of them Fakatka rumors? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, we just don't know. Some, we just can't tell. So what you were know, the logos? Images all, they all can't seem, uh, seem to come from the same place. Have they right? changed? Well, okay, so I, the Windows logo, I could visualize it perfectly. It's a colorful window kind of whooshing in. Um, the last major change was with Windows X. XP? No, or was it Vista? XP. And then they've sort of evolved it since XP, but it's the same basic It's design, roughly right? the they same, got, yeah. They got rid of those weird little black dashes that used to come off the side um but before you know windows uh the windows 3x versions and 95 and nt4 uh windows 2000 all had the same kind of basic you know windows 98 all those releases same basic windows flag here's i found a uh, website this is uh hugon dot ws and he has a history of windows logos there's windows one that was just the Microsoft logo, and they kind of updated it. Microsoft. Can you not see it? Oh, that's because I haven't shifted to it. How about that? Now can you see it? So okay. there's the uh, that they didn't even have a Windows logo in, in when, version one, yeah, or version two, or yeah. version three. But then this is the famous kind of decomposing yeah, that, window. That one lasted for yeah you know, almost a long time. 10 years, Windows years. three one three one one, uh, Windows ninety five. You know, kind of is on an angle now. It's 
It's mm -hmm. flying instead of falling apart, but it's otherwise very similar. NT, what, uh, we don't know what happened there. Well, no, no, that, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what, what a worthless what? website. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the yeah. logo. What I don't know what that's that is. Not. Back to it's Windows like 98. Windows 98 Second Edition. Windows Me, still that decomposing window. Windows yeah, 2000. Then the XP. That you're right, Paul. That's when they kind of stylized it, and they eliminated yep. the panes. They eliminated mm -hmm. the exhaust. It just became the four. Uh, they eliminated the frame. They have the four panes in four colors. Yeah, they, they also kind of changed the the way it ripples there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's rippling not, the other direction. It's not one big curve. It's right. two. Yes, you have a you have the eye of a graphic designer, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well. And, uh, anywho, <laughs> anywho, server two thousand three, same thing. Vista. See, they flatten it. You know, they flatten it. They they put the, the this kind of a white burst that comes from the center yeah. here. But not, but, but yeah, it's, it's now here's this is Windows seven. They're starting to put like uh, transparent like uh, that's not that's nature. Not the logo. That's just the that's, that's just the, the desktop. Wallpaper. This through. website is this is horribly. He's inaccurate. French. That's why. <laughs> I'll look for another it's one. Like, it's like a mixture of boot screens and wallpapers. Yeah. Is that a oh, come on. All right. Here, let's try it. Here, this is, a, this is a YouTube video. That'll be better because you know how valuable, you, how, how accurate YouTube is. The history of the Windows logo. So, it starts up as <laughs> Windows 9... Uh, Windows apparently recorded by a small Windows child. Apparently recorded by a small child. Windows This used to be the message on my voice, you know, my answering machine. And then they Is go it really? Windows 2000. <laughs> and then to Windows XP. <laughs> and Windows Vista. This is good. This is accurate. Yeah. I don't know what the pixelation is there. Windows 7. I guess they discovered a new transition for their slideshow. <laughs> That's it. There you go. That's <laughs> That is um <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what will Paul and Mary Joe? What will the new Windows logo look like? Thank you very much. Well, there was a there was a leaked screenshot which some people think is real and some do not Ooh. that makes it look like a very flat. Um, the problem is, it comes from a site that has all this stuff that's not real. You know, uh, yeah, so it's kind of it, hard to say. I don't know. It was pretty different. And I mean, supposedly kind of Metro style, although I wouldn't really call it that myself. Um, or I wouldn't call it Metro style. I'd just call it Metro like, Metro ish, maybe. That's yeah, flat rectangles but that are skewed off. Rectangles. The distance. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe they're going to do it. I mean, they want to make the point that Windows 8 is really different from all the other Windows that came before it, and it's Windows reimagined. So th maybe they will change the logo, but I, I doubt they're going to make it something unrecognizable. I mean, there's too much vested in the Windows brand to just suddenly go, okay, let's just change everything completely here. This is extrapolated from a post. Uh, Neo went extrapolated it from a Chinese uh, uh, website. Yeah, they also stole my photograph, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, that's what happens on the Internet. That's so, what happens on the Internet. <laughs> Disgruntled like, what, Paul it, says, uh, <sighs> Uh, how about this? We uh, this could be the this could be the new Windows 8 logo. I I like this. I'm 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 voting. Wait a minute, let me find this here. I'm voting for this. Oh crud! There's a lot of imagined Windows 8 logos on the. Is internet. it a picture of the coyote holding a little umbrella? No, we take the. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a great logo. We take the uh, Windows uh, uh, 7 logo and we add an 8 to the. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you. You, <laughs> you have the heart of a graphic designer in the body of a Somebody spent basketball time on that, player. You know, they probably zoomed in to make sure all the colors were just right. Yep. They spent a lot of time. Actually, you know, if you really, if you want to investigate, there's a, a, a vast array of choices. <laughs> I like I like this one. <laughs> they crayon out the seven and they write an eight. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, I guess this is a hobby for some people to think to imagine what the logo might uh, look like. But the, the 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 I guess the reason they thought it might change is because the hardware, the Chinese hardware, had a different bug on it or Except something. Except it, it didn't. That's oh. a a photoshopped <laughs> version of my photograph. Oh. That has uh, the real flag on it. So, oh, I, you know, it's that actually uh, was your. You took that picture. Yeah, I did. That's the slate I have. This one. Oh well, uh, that's your slate, yep. right, that's there. That's, right there, right there. That's, that's you. 
So they just took that's the desk right in front of me. That's pretty funny. So really, we we now know uh, that that was a bad Photoshop. Yep. So hoax then. Well, not I mean not necessarily. In other words, right. if that was the logo, that you know that photograph could show what it might look like on a slate. You know, other than the fact that it's backwards or whatever. <laughs> well, I guess that's forwards. It's terrible looking. Whatever it is, it's, and this I'm is just, hysterical. This is your photo. Yeah. That's your desk. And then cnbeta.com just decided, to, well, let's just take Paul's photo and put a new logo right there. And put our little logo on the corner of the picture. <laughs> it's ours. We took it. When rumors has learned. <laughs> All right. I think, we're, I, think we're, I think we're done with that. I think that rumor is, <laughs> that rumor is history. I, I don't know. Uh, no, and next week we'll find out it's real. I, I you know, like yeah. the theme of the show is we just don't know. We just don't uh, know. We don't, we don't know. Yeah. We just don't know. How about accessibility improvements? I met at Food Camp a couple of years ago a woman Microsoft hired uh, to do accessibility across all platforms. She's actually done a great job. I saw her again last year, and uh, she was very pleased with the reception she received in each and every division of Microsoft uh, improving accessibility. Except for apparently Windows Phone, which has absolutely zero right. accessibility features. That's a good point. I, is, I'm pretty. I, I, I'm not an expert. My son is deaf, so I know a little bit about this stuff. But it seems like you're actually legally required to add these features. Eight to your the Americans that, uh, disability with disabilities. Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll see on the Windows Seven front. I, honestly, the uh, I'm sorry, the Windows Eight front. The the accessibility features they showed off this week are really just evolutions of what came before, designed largely to make. That stuff work well on a touch space interface, you know, right. big deal. But you know, for my son in particular, who's hard of, or who's deaf rather, um, you know, ca uh, integrated captioning support would be very welcome. And this is something Apple's had for years and years on uh, on the Mac, on iOS, on iTunes, and QuickTime, uh, on the Apple TV, and so forth. And uh, if you try to uh, get captions in a uh, digital video in Windows Media Player, it's not there. So maybe that's something that. They'll be adding in Windows 8. They didn't discuss that. I would hope so. But, I mean, they're, they're, as far as I'm concerned, they're actually years behind in the accessibility front. And um, I, I'm just dis disappointed in that. So hopefully I'll see something better in the future. But so far, um, not super impressive. I, I think you're, I don't know if they're legally required, but certainly commercially they're bound to because, uh, you know, everybody does it now. And it's just you, you got to have it. Some better than others. Some, some some people would say that they are in fact legally required to do this. Yeah. But no, I, I'm sure they are. I mean, you can't, I'm, not, I'm not in the vanguard of that. But you can't open a business uh, without a ramp and uh, you know uh, handicapped accessible uh, bathrooms and all of that. Sure. Uh, the app submission process for Windows 8, you say, is going to be aimed at disgruntled iOS developers. <laughs> If you hate iOS, you'll love Windows 8. <laughs> no, We've no, learned. No, I tell no, you no, one thing, no, though, no, we know about developers. They will put out up with an immense amount of pain if there is money to be made on a platform. So just making it easy to develop for is not sufficient. Right? Just making it easy to develop for. No, I, I think just, the problem with the, the iOS stuff is that uh, the, the application submission process is, um, what's the opposite of transparent? Arcane. Opaque. Arcane, <laughs> illogical. I, I honestly believe that Apple has in a room somewhere a giant roulette wheel and they spin it and then they say, no, reject it and reject it because of this reason, you know, whatever that says. I mean, it, it, and people get these things back and they're like, huh? <laughs> they don't even know what, they, you know, they don't understand. Right. No, I mean, they don't, they don't get why they were rejected. And right. so the, that post, which was, um, uh, was made to their, they have a Windows store for developer blog was aimed at showing, hey, look, we're going to be really transparent. And it is, actually, it's a good example of the way Microsoft used to be. They say, unlike some other app stores, <laughs> we're not going to say who. We, I think we oh, all yes. Know. Well, let me think. Who could that? <laughs> other know. app stores? Are there I think they meant Linux. Linux. Desktop the, Linux. The, the, the Ubuntu app store is far from transparent. Exactly. I can vouch. No, I'm just kidding. But I will underscore the fact that transparent or not, people are going to develop for the platform where they think they're most likely to make money. Yes. And in the case of Windows actually now when we're not talking about you know the phone they have a pretty good track yeah. record of making people money yeah <laughs> i mean so i mean they have i mean they've got 500 million windows 7 machines out there and they keep throwing that number out there saying look how many we already have out there so if you want to get to a big potential pool of people windows is your best bet i mean they they have a point to make there obviously yeah. it is different uh, though because it isn't uh, you know it's metro 
Um, there is an app store. I mean, there are there there, there are some differences here. Uh, Actually, yeah. I, we, Leo and I had talked about this years ago, but I think one of the biggest disappointments for Microsoft over the past several years has been the relative lack of acceptance to its developer platforms over the many past many years. I think one of the things that Windows always rode the back on was these new sets of APIs that exhibited new capabilities that developers could take advantage of, and they did that for many years. And then it all came to a grinding halt with um, with Windows Vista, you know, which was originally Longhorn and had the you know the uh, original version of XAML and um, uh, Avalon and all that stuff. And developers got very excited about that, but because of what happened with Windows Vista, I think there was a lot of um, uh, attrition there, if you will, on the developer front. And those APIs, and then subsequent APIs like WPF and Silverlight, I think were very underutilized by developers as a percentage compared to, say, with the past. And then all the, the major development that occurred in that time period occurred on the web, and it occurred with mobile devices. And so obviously now in, in Windows 8, they're, they're targeting actually both of those things. It makes a lot of sense. You know, HTML and web standards, and obviously the mobile devices with Metro. So um, this is them attempting, I think, in some ways to get back their lost mojo, because that used to be a big deal for Microsoft yeah. as the developer community. Yeah. yeah. And you can even reserve your app name now, right, in the Windows Store. So oh, that's fun. Right. Yep. I reserved Windows Reserve now. now. Did you reserve one, Paul? <laughs> Get your no, Windows app name now. Hmm, can I? Uh, I'm going to reserve sad trombone. <laughs> right. Coyote with umbrella. <laughs> the official Paul Thrano. Number one fart app. That's me. <laughs> so that's interesting. Do you have to actually then develop an app or can you just reserve the name? I assume they expect you to develop an app. I don't know if, if a guy in a suit and a baseball bat is going to show up at your house or whatever. But and we were informed that you were going to create the number yeah. one fart app. What happened? Uh, we, were, we were led to believe that it would be some form of executable. If you ever want to walk again, you will develop the number one fart app. <laughs> because, after all, what is a platform without flatulence? Um, the start button uh, uh, is gone from the desktop. <gasps> that's true. That one's true. <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> that is true. Um, I didn't see that. I saw a start button, didn't I? Am I wrong? I well, thought, it, th it, it's there in the developer preview, but it's gone. And remember, this is just from the desktop. Um, are gone. you are you parsing that video like frame by frame? Is that how you know that? No, there was some. There was a leaked screenshot, and ah. I, I think what um, uh, what, what, what do we press about this? I, 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 no, but remember that the, the desktop is not the primary interface, and one of the screenshots right. shows what looks like a kind of a tooltip that pops up. Clearly, there's a space that you can mouse to, and that there is a uh, something that occurs. It's just like what the start button used to do, and with the desktop not being the primary interface in Windows 8 anymore. Uh, combined with the fact that we all have this weird muscle memory about going down to that corner to access that functionality. That's kind of the problem is that you've got muscle memory, you know? Yeah. Do you call it mousel good... memory? No, I, <laughs> I, th I think you should term. coin that term, though. That's, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Mousel memory. That's your muscle new app muscles. name. <laughs> <laughs> muscle, muscle memory. Muscle memory. Yeah. Yeah. Muscle memory. <laughs> um, but, uh, okay, so what happens when I press the Windows key? Will there be a Windows key anymore? Well, no, but that's the, that, and that was the post I wrote. See, the, the Windows button's not really going away. Uh, every To get a logo, a Windows 8 device or PC needs to have a Windows key on it somewhere, ah. uh, either on the bezel of its tablet or on the keyboard, obviously. So the, you don't that need a button on the screen. There. Yeah. Right. If you use a mouse... You can obviously mouse down in that corner anyway. Even though the button's gone, the space is still there. It still obviously does something. And then presumably on a touch screen, it would work in a very similar fashion. It's kind of interesting because Android's going the opposite direction. Android's uh, position was uh, we can't really control physical buttons. So we're going to move all the physical buttons off the hardware onto the screen. And so that's what Ice Cream Sandwich does. I, it gives me a little bit of a stomach ache because buttons, you know, menus and things can be in different, you know, the home button can be somewhere that you don't expect. But the, but their position is, but that the developer needs to control that. Uh, and my, so Microsoft's oh, but, saying, uh, no, we want we want a hardware button. Yeah, they've made a, they have specs for the stuff and just like they do for Windows Phone. So for Windows devices, uh, there has to be a volume up, volume down, has to be a power switch, has to be a a window, they call it a Windows key button, I think is the name. Um, it's Windows interesting. Key button. Yeah, that's a strange name, but yeah. it, it's basically a, a button that has the Windows logo on it, and it's in hardware now instead of in software. But but again, 
if you're used to clicking it with a mouse, for example, which a lot of people are, the, the space is still there. You know, they left the space. And so it, it presumably does exactly the same thing as it did before. They're just getting rid of the, the start button. And now it's something that becomes available no matter which interface you're in, Metro or the desktop. You don't, you know, it's not tied to the desktop anymore. It's just a universal area of the screen. <sighs> just taking a deep breath because that's... That, that that pains me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I don't care. I couldn't care less. Tango. <laughs> but I just, I'm ready because I know there will be people who will say, what uh, happened to the start button? I liked Windows 8 until they took away the start button. Right. Screw those right. guys. Right. And then there'll be a call to bring back the start button. And then Microsoft will put an additional toggle oh, in I the control panel. Listen, uh, it, the number one downloaded utility for the Windows 8 Consumer Preview is going to be something that yeah. puts a start button exactly. there. Exactly. Precisely. So <laughs> Precisely. Expect it. It's, it's, it's going to happen. Oh, i got to register that app, too. <laughs> start button restore. Uh, Tango. What is Tango? Yo, okay, Tango, so Tango. Let the code name Queen talk here yes. about a code name. The queen. Um, so... Yeah, Tango. So it goes, right now we're in Mango on Windows Phone, which yes. is the current version, also known as Windows OS 7.1, which runs on Windows Phone 7.5 handsets, just to keep it really clear and not confusing. Okay. Um, so the next release is called Tango, um, and Paul thinks it's going to be called um, 7.5.1, I believe. Don't you, Paul? That's Sorry. just a guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so it's a minor release of the Windows Phone operating system that is due out by mid-year or so. And this week there were, were a couple new leaks on Tango. There are people posting up um, over WMP, uh, WM Power User, I think it is, um, a bunch of screenshots that they say are of Tango um, running on various handsets. And the one thing we've, we've heard consistently about Tango is it's supposed to be targeting low-end smartphones, uh, primarily in the developing world. So in order to do that, they have to reduce some of the specs on current phones um, to make it work on these lower-end phones. So one thing supposedly they're doing is cutting uh, the memory down to 256 um, megs, aren't they? Paul, is that right? Remember, yeah, you I had a the, whole the, slew of the stuff bigger, on this. <laughs> Yeah, the bigger distinction is that it's, it's actually possible today for someone to have shipped a phone with 256 megs of RAM. I think some, a handful of them maybe did. Um, but the trick is, in, I guess, in Tango, they're, they're lowering the amount of resources that will be available to an app on such a device. So it's even though the memory is technically still something that was possible, the amount of resources you can get will be less. And uh, these phones will not have a, some access to some background processes. So some of the features they just introduced in Mango actually will be detuned in, uh, yeah. in Tango, curiously, for those phones in those markets. Yep. Yep. So my, my theory, uh, because when I, when I first heard about Tango, I, I heard it described as two releases, Tango 1 and Tango 2. Um, and the reason I think this tip actually is starting to look more and more correct is it, there are also some features uh, coming in Tango, according to the new screenshots, that are things that everybody might want, not just people um, on low-end phones. And they cited as an example, uh, multi-attachments in a single MMS um, message. And so, you know, a lot of people said, hey, wait, I don't, I don't want to have to get a low-power, low-end phone to get that. That sounds like a great feature. I want it. So the rumor is there's Tango 1 and Tango 2. And supposedly Tango 1 is just, uh, if this is true, Tango 1 is going to be an update for all existing Windows phones. And you'll get some of these new features that are part of this release. And Tango 2 may be the release that's just for the lower end um, kind of developing country semi-feature phone, semi-smartphone type platform. So that, that could be what's going on. It's another one of these we just don't know things. Um, but <laughs> it's, it sounds like this. It, it is shaping up based on some of these leaks and screenshots and all. Um, and then uh, one more leak that happened this week was uh, at, at the Mobile World Congress uh, in Barcelona. Supposedly Nokia is going to have a new very low-end platform, the Nokia 610. People are calling it the Lumia 610 running Tango. So this may be the first time that Microsoft actually publicly and officially acknowledges Tango, if that tip is correct. I would, I would expect that, right? Mobile World Congress is the obvious 
time to launch that. I also wonder if they're going to have two Tango releases. Why couldn't they have called them Tango and Cash? That oh, awesome. I, I was get, trying to think of a joke. There was something there. Oh, you got it. I got an email from uh, Francois Neron who says, you know, if you're going to, if you have to say, I don't know so frequently, uh, you might use some variants. Like, I'm not sure. I have no idea. Beats me. Search me. I don't have a clue. Who knows? Lord knows. How should I know? You've got me. Ask me another time. By the way, here's the, uh, the new Windows 8 logo, just in case anybody was... <laughs> yeah, exactly. There we go. Uh, all right. I don't know. Search me. You got me there. I have no possible clue. Or just... <laughs> the sound the thing, you know, the note. thing that keeps coming up about Tango, whenever whenever you tell people about, you know, this whole idea, Tango 1, Tango 2, low-end phones, uh, not on every phone, possibly, um, is everyone starts talking about fragmentation, right? And yeah, like, but Windows Phone uh -huh. is so not fragmented up to now, they could stay at a little right. fragment. There's room for fragmentation. Yeah. Just because Apple yeah. only has one, you know, I mean, Apple even has multiple models, if you think of the 3GS, 4, and 4S, all of which are being sold. Well, yeah, but the point being that having a single platform makes a certain amount of sense, right? Oh, yeah, if you all can the, do it. All the great. reasons that Microsoft has said. But the market is fragmented. But the reality is, right, the different people have different needs. I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, the people who are asking, well, why doesn't Microsoft make one version of Windows? You know? Right. I mean, I, especially when a, you're talking a global market, there are very different capabilities and needs. Yeah. And you just yeah. Can't. So the, the Tango thing is not something that someone in the United States is probably going to want based right. on what we know about it. But... Uh, of course, we said that about product. the Nokia, the Lumia 800, or not 800, 710. We thought, oh, everybody will get the, the, the 900. But a lot, I see a lot of people very happy with 710s. Well, two. <laughs> two of them. <laughs> but that's all, well, I mean. But they're that's very almost happy. all of the 1.5%. Two people. <laughs> two people, I, I know. And they love them. I um, actually had lunch with somebody the other day who had pulled out a Windows uh, a Lumia uh, 710. Yeah. And uh, and she said, yeah, I'm just crazy about it. I said, are you, are you interested in the 900 at all? And she said, no. I love the 710. It's well, a good size. The 900 is bigger, right? Yeah. No, there you go. And, and the, the 710s are colorful. You know, that's going to... Pretty. Uh, they don't need a front-facing... She doesn't need a front-facing yeah. camera, which is the other, I think, thing that's missing. I, 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 I will never use a front-facing no, camera. No, most people ever. won't. I, you know when you use it? When you're trying to take a picture of yourself. And Actually, you, here's when I use it. I'm trying to take a picture, and my hand hits the wrong part of the screen. Yeah, that's when you and use it. Suddenly, I'm looking at a very befuddled me, and then and I'm, that's hey, scary, isn't hand, it? You know, ah! yeah. ah! That's when I use it. <laughs> All right, we we got to let Paul go in a minute, so we'll get this uh, one more story in, and uh, and then you could quickly do your picks and all that stuff too. We got it's it's noon now. Can I can you give me two minutes? Yep. I don't want you to be late. No, I haven't seen that. Office 2010 University Edition. Yes. Really? Well, actually, this is Mary Jo's story. Let's save that. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's save, save that. that, and we'll do that right. after Paul disappears. So okay. let me let me let's get our let's get Paul. Why don't we get your tip and software pick? Then okay. you can run. Mary Jo can okay. do that story. Do her enterprise and code name picks. How about that? Okay. I'll just run through this quick. Uh, the tip of the week is about OneNote. I, I've I, I've been using OneNote a lot more recently, and, and I, I don't have time to get into the reasons for that right now. But one of the things <laughs> that's really neat about OneNote is that unlike in all the previous versions, you can use it in a completely different way in OneNote 2010, which is to say instead of having local uh, notebooks on your PC that are trapped on a PC, and then you could kind of share them you know, between PCs, you can actually centralize your notebooks up in the cloud using SkyDrive or SharePoint Online, or just SharePoint, I should say, or Office 365, whatever, and use them from the web. You know, that's so what exactly I do is what I, we're doing right now for the that's notes. Exactly the what show. we're doing right now. Yeah. So uh, the, the Windows Weekly Notebook is one of several notebooks that I have up in SkyDrive, and I create them there, and then I open. Uh, there's a link in SkyDrive. You can say open in OneNote, and then I open them on the PC and I edit them from there. I, you know, I add all the stuff that I want to add to them, and then they become available from anywhere on any device. And it's particularly nice now because Everywhere, now all of yeah. a sudden, yeah, OneNote's on everything. It's obviously on Windows. It's on Windows Phone. It's on iPad, Android. Android, everywhere. iPhone, and, and yeah, it's on all those devices. So, um, yeah, suddenly it's it's fairly universal. and uh, That's exciting. Yeah. It, it's sneaking up on Evernote, essentially. Yeah, exactly. I think Evernote was designed from the beginning to be like this. You know, OneNote was designed uh, years right, ago, so it was right. on uh, just on PCs. But they've really evolved, and it's it's actually become uh, very very nice. So, 
<clears throat> the software pick is uh, a new version of Facebook for actually for Windows Phone. Sorry, the note says Windows Windows, but it's Windows Phone. And the reason I bring this one up is because you know they've updated the Windows Phone version of Facebook a few times, but this is a major major update. I use Facebook and Windows Phone uh, very free frequently. I do a lot of check-ins and things like that. And this one now emulates the the way that Facebook looks and works on the web, which I really, really like. So it's got that kind of header with the beautiful photos and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's got quick access to you know, your contacts and messages. And um, it's got really nice – it's got a, an app bar that's there in the, uh, in the screen that you hit every time you load it that has the things you want to do most often, which are right. check in, which used to be really buried in this app for right. some reason. Right. Um, post anything and then also just take a photo and post that. So uh, really nice job on that. And um, – you know, again, if you're not using, if you're using integrated functionality in Windows Phone, it's understandable. But the Facebook app actually has additional functionality, and now that they've really kind of put it over the top and it's released, it's certainly, it's just a, a fantastic app. It's always been a good app. I mean, this is one of my very first app picks on Windows Phone. You know, from about a year and a half ago. But this version in particular, they should have called it Facebook 3.0. I have no idea what the version numbers <laughs> like that for, but uh, definitely a major release and, and something you're going to want to grab. It's and it is free, of course. And uh, I, I particularly like on your blog post on the super site for Windows, you've got one of those pictures where you accidentally <laughs> took a picture of yourself. And I'm just calling this yeah, one, yeah. here's Johnny. Yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> you, can't, you can't see it, but I have an inch of snow on the top. And, of and an axe, I believe. Uh, but yeah, I, exactly. <laughs> this was the last picture my wife ever took. <laughs> All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we're going to let you head to Barcelona via Madrid and London. You poor, okay. poor, poor person. Do you have, a, you have your, uh, you know phone and uh, whatever loaded up with uh, movies tv yep. shows books uh, international data plan i got the whole thing going are you going to do the stand we were talking i don't know if we i think this was before the show began the stand is yeah. now on audible and uh 47 hours could just about get you to barcelona i think if i, could, if I finish the book before i got there something went horribly, horribly wrong like that. you might finish it before you get back though will you will you download that before you leave yeah yep. good all right. Well, Paul, have a great trip. I, are you going to be back next uh, next Thursday? Yeah, or? I come back Wednesday, so I'll be back. Oh man! For... Well, enjoy. Barcelona is a wonderful city. I know you'll be dining on paella by this time next week. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I pray for you anyway. Paul okay. Thorat, Super Site for Windows, WinSuperSite dot com. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye. Have a safe uh, trip and uh, enjoy Barcelona. Have you been to Barcelona, Mary Jo? I have. It's I so great, isn't it? Oh, me too. Awesome. One of my yep. favorite cities in the world. So we were talking. I don't think I'd want to go for a MWC from what I hear about that. Oh, is it, cra <laughs> is it crazy? Yeah, very crazy. Huh. Yep. We it's were really, like CES. <laughs> we were really thinking about covering it, and I think we're probably going to cover it next year. We just didn't have enough time to do it this year. Had I known that the Windows on ARM announcement was going to be there February 29th, we might have gone this year but we might have gone too if, yeah, we, had if we had had <laughs> just a hint microsoft sometimes yeah. you got to make plans ahead of time <laughs> this is what apple does though they do this every uh, year they tell you just like a week ahead of time when w we still don't know when wwdc will be and you just, it's just oh, wow i think everybody's emulating apple as if that's the magic right things like yep. don't 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 tell people ahead of time when your events are Ooh, that's the magic uh, Office 2010, the University Edition. What is this? I, I know the college and what well, they have a student and family edition. Yep, they have a student and I think it's called Student at Home. Student at Home, that's and then it. They, yeah. They also had this edition called Academic Professional, and this was kind of known in in a lot of circles as the version you try to get because it's the cheapest one. Right. It's usually under right. 100 bucks. Right. And even if you're not a student, you could find some way to lie sure. and get it, yeah. you know? So it kind of became their, the version that everybody was buying, even though they weren't students. And Microsoft knew this, and they really wanted to kind of clamp down on this. So um, what they did is introduce this new edition uh, that replaces the Academic Pro. It's called Office University 2010, and there's a comparable version uh, for Office on the Mac as well. And it's got all the same things in it that you get with Office uh, Academic. So you get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Publisher, Access. You get you get the whole suite. The trick now, though, is they're, they're making it harder to pirate it. Uh -huh. um, so, well, I shouldn't say pirate. How about steal? Um, no, so, you, know, it's you, not know. Ex you know, it's one of those things that I think people justify it <laughs> because it's like, well, uh, 
I'm a student. Right. I'm a student of life. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, you know, what, the, what they're doing is they added this whole new layer of verification. So they're really going to make sure you're a full-time uh, college or higher learning student before you can get this edition now. And it's still like around 99 bucks. So you get almost everything that you get by paying multiple hundreds of dollars for office, but you have to prove wow. that you're a student in higher education. And the person who tipped me to this was a, a guy who does a talk radio show in Vancouver. His name's Alan Perry. And he said, Microsoft told him this is going to be the way they do this going forward. So, you know, when Office 15 comes out, there's, this edition is going to be something that becomes the new way to get Office um, if you're in uh, higher learning. So you have to um, sign in with a Windows Live ID and then yep. provide your school email address, your sign-in ID, I presume to the school servers, or international student identity card. But, you know, a lot of people, I have a yale.edu uh, email address. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not unusual for alumni to have mm -hmm. either keep or get edu addresses. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Not, I wonder still how they not get that hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think they're just they're trying to just do a little something more because they just know this is what everybody yeah. does, right? No, it is. Like, this it's, is how you get off. It's a poorly <laughs> it's a poorly kept secret, I agree, Mary Jo. It's a very poorly kept yes. secret. <laughs> and now it's gone. It is. Aww. <laughs> that was a double one. All right. Wow. We did <laughs> We're going to come back and get your enterprise pick of the week. I know this is this is the big tease. Everybody stay tuned. And the code name pick of the week, Mary Jo Foley, is still here from allaboutmicrosoft.com. Before we do that, though, I want to talk a little bit about hover.com. Um, I know many of you, in fact, I get this all the time on Twitter. People say, yeah, I got to renew or I got to create a, a domain name. I really not want to go back to that other guy again for various reasons. Um, what do you recommend? And I'm always glad to say hover.com. It's where we moved our addresses. We still have a couple to get over there because I've been lazy. I should, you know, I should take advantage of their free concierge service. If you listen to this show, call that number you see in the upper right hand corner uh, at uh, windows.hover.com and say, hey, Leo said that you would move all my domains over for free. Otherwise, it's 25 bucks, but it's for as many domains as you want. They'll move them. They charge you ten dollars for the moving, but you get an additional year on the domain. So it's a great it's a great deal. You 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 get you get an additional year, and they move it for you for free. Hover dot com. You can even tell by looking at the site. It's clean. It's simple. Very straightforward. They've their customer service is unbeatable. They have a no hold policy. When you call customer service Monday through Friday, nine a.m. to eight p.m. Eastern, you'll get a live person, and they will not put you on hold until the job is done. So, and they're really nice because they're Canadian, uh, and that's just kind of built in. Hover dot com. Go to windows dot hover uh, dot com today. Um, you actually can save ten percent off when you use the offer code Windows. Uh, they now have pro – it doesn't account for premium domains. This is something new on Hover. If you enter in a name of a domain, let's say you want to do uh, trousershop.com, and you say, I want, I'm ne I want to register trousershop.com. Just, you know, people do this all the time. They come up with a name. Well, you know, maybe trousershop.com is taken. It is. But you can see what the price would be because the person who owns it has told Hover, hey, if somebody comes up with this price, whoever it is, even if it's like, you know, J.C. Penny, I'll sell it to them for this fixed price. Those are premium domains. You see that with the star on it? Uh, they also have uh, domains uh, on sale, as you can see, some special prices. So... This is a really great way to register domains, and if it's a if it's a premium domain you want, get it at a fixed price. They also have a clunker trade in. If <laughs> if you're like me, and I think a lot of people who listen to the show are, where you say, "I got a great name domain name idea," number one fartapp dot com, uh, and you register that, and you never use it. We call that a clunker. And uh, if you have registered domains, you've registered or renewed at Hubbard and you want to upgrade your domain, they will take the old domain back and refund you, credit you, everything you spent on your old clunker with Hover. That includes the original registration fee and any renewal fees. Oh, you got to like that. It kind of almost encourages you to, uh, to pick up some extra domain names. 
Go to windows.hover.com. Just write that down because maybe you don't need it right now. Uh, but when the time comes and you want to register a domain, or maybe you want to move all your domains over there, windows.hover.com. They're great people with great service. Re I really can say that. Really nice domain management tools. And you're just going to be so happy you moved over there. I talk to people every single day. I get emails, tweets from people who say, I moved to Hover, and I'm so happy. Windows.hover.com. Mary Jo Foley is still here. She is not flying to Barcelona. No. No. Would sadly, you, no. Yeah. Would you have gone if you had had you know, two months advance notice? Would you have? Yes. You, I you, would have gone even yeah. with less than that. Yeah. yeah. You want to go to this, this announcement? Yeah. Somebody said... No, and Go ahead. It, it was just crazy because we, we found out so late. By the time we found out, which was last week, I think, um, you know, all the hotels are gone because right. it's MWC. It's a huge and conference already there. Yeah. 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 We just couldn't get in. So it was like, oh, well, I guess we can't even go. <sighs> well, it, more frustrating to Paul, who is there. <laughs> I know. That's even worse. It's <laughs> more frustrating. It's like I it flew is. all the way there. <laughs> and I'm going home before it start, before they do it. Somebody said in the chairman, I think this is so right. Instead of WOA, Windows on Arm, they should have named it W Arm or Warm. Mm. Wouldn't that have been Whoa. a better code name? Warm. <laughs> warm. Yeah. Warm. You're the code name queen. You, you, you. I know. I kind of like that. Warm. Yeah, yeah it wouldn't have been bad. It's warm. So our <laughs> enterprise pick of the week, Mary Jo Foley. Another one of those weird acronyms, WAD. Oh, w no. Oh, yes. no. W-A-A-D. I am not making this up. This is a real Microsoft <laughs> name. Stands for Windows Azure Active Directory, um, which is, it's a very interesting idea. So, you know, Active Directory is a directory server in Windows Server. And so their idea is, let's do the conceptual equivalent of this for Windows in the cloud. So that's what Windows Azure Active Directory, also known as WAD, is. So is this kind um, of like, I mean, I'm familiar with LDAP, <laughs> which is kind of a, kind of yeah, similar. Directory. Is it, is it kind of like that? Yeah, you know, so Active Directory is what is built into Windows Server. It's, right. it's what does what LDAP does, pretty much, right. you know. Um, but um, the way I found out about this is kind of crazy. So Microsoft's got a, the Tech Ed conferences coming up in uh, June. There's one in Orlando and there's one in Amsterdam. And hopefully we can go to both of those. Um, yeah. 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 Um, so uh, in the, I started looking through, you know, what are they going to talk about at this? And this is a very big topic for Tech Ed, Windows Azure Active Directory. So they're going to be talking about how this fits in with their Azure roadmap. And um, they're going to talk about it in a way that says, if you're a customer and you want to run something in hybrid mode, so some stuff on premises, some stuff in the cloud, you're going to be able to use this to more, more um, easily connect your hybrid and cloud apps, more securely do that. So you can use this to, you can use your hybrid on-prem active directory to secure your cloud apps. And you're even going to be able to implement single sign-on using this um, for Office 365 as well, which is their platform as a service offering. So it's going to be a big deal. It's something you should definitely keep in the back of your mind because you're going to hear a lot more from Microsoft this year about what they're doing to sync up their directory on-prem and their directory in the cloud. And you're going to hear WAD a lot. It, it makes sense. So, But I'm sure Microsoft yeah. Active Directory can be done over, uh, over the Internet, right? Or no? Right. It can. I think it can. I think, it, I think you can at least connect from the Active Directory on-prem to right. your Active Directory in the cloud, right? That would so, make sense. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm almost sure you can do that. But this so, just puts it on Azure. It does. This is like, I think it's trying to make people have the idea that everything is going to be mirrored that's on-prem to the cloud. Got it. Yeah. And that makes sense. It does. That makes sense. It totally makes sense. Finally, our code name pick of the week. And I have to think this is not the first time this code name's ever been used. No. And maybe not the well, last. Probably week. not the last, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the code name of the week is one I picked out of the old... Uh, codename archives and it was Geneva and the reason I am talking about this codename today is because it has a lot to do with Active Directory so this is this is a funny codename for a couple different respects so it, to, it talks to you about Microsoft's strategy of having things uh, with similar themes in the same codename family so Geneva was the codename for Active Directory Federation services at one point um, and then Microsoft started 
expanding what Geneva meant. So then Geneva also became the name for Windows Identity Foundation Framework. And then it also became the code name for Windows Card Space. So they just started throwing more and more things into it. <laughs> it's all Geneva. Um, it's all Geneva. And, and it's funny. Even now, I sometimes hear people talk about, like, they'll say, is that Geneva? And, like it's, you know, the real product name because all the <laughs> actual product names were so complicated. They had to, it was much easier to just say Geneva. It's Geneva. Um, yeah. And the, here's, so here's the like related part. So at one point before Active Directory Federation Services was codenamed Geneva, it was codenamed Zermatt. And, and I was like, what is Zermatt? So I looked it up, and Zermatt is also a city in Switzerland as well. That's right. That's right. Yep. With yep. two so, T's. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I found out the guy who was doing a lot of the work on uh, the Geneva stuff, he, <laughs> he was, yes, he went he, to Switzerland a lot, and <laughs> that's why you get all these Swiss code names. Just be glad they didn't name Wad Gestad. They exactly. Could, they could have probably figured out a way to make Gestad work. Yes, they probably could have. <laughs> but nobody would have known how to say it. No, they wouldn't know. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, so that's what Geneva is and um, how it relates to Active Directory. Awesome. Mary Jo Foley, thank you for not flying to Barcelona. <laughs> You're welcome. For staying right here with us. Mary Jo, of course, writes all about Microsoft for ZDNet at allaboutmicrosoft.com and joins Paul to do this show every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC on twit.tv. You can watch live. It's always fun. Uh, but if you miss the show, don't forget, you can always download it after the fact. We make audio and video available on our website and everywhere finer podcasts are available. Look for the, we finally have you on the uh, album art. So look for Paul and Mary yes. Jo on the album art. It's a very nice looking cover, I must say. And Mary <laughs> Jo, I thank you so much for uh, being here. And we will see you next week on Windows Week. Yes. Bye-bye.